Welcome to my lecture online. One of the reasons why life is so possible on the earth is because we have mountains, lots of mountains, the process of mountain building. And of course, mountains erode away and new ones need to take their place. Otherwise, eventually over time, the mountains wouldn't be there anymore. They wear away because of the rain and the wind and all the rivers slowly grind down the mountain regions. So new ones continue to form on a continual basis through volcanic activity and because of the land masses and tectonic plate movement, they continue to build up new mountains and therefore we have mountains all over the world. Now why are those mountains so important? Well, they in a sense catch the rain water. If it wasn't for mountains, there are a lot of places that would have far less water, one, and secondly, they store the water in the form of snow and ice and then slowly release that throughout the year. So if you take a look at this map, you can see that there's lots of places where there's a lot of mountains and notice where the mountains are. That's typically where most of the people live because that's where most of the water is available. Take Australia, for example. And no, this is not to the correct size. This is not to scale. I drew Australia a little bit bigger than I should have. But notice on the, on the uh, east side of the continent, there's some mountains there. And because of that, there's a lot more rain and a lot more water available. And the rest of the continent tends to be extremely dry. Water is very scarce, but their water is very plentiful in comparison. Same with North America. There's regions where water is rather scarce and then there's regions where there's lots of water. And again, if it wasn't for those mountains, some of these places would be virtually uninhabitable because it's the mountains where you get most of the rain and the snow and then that rain and snow becomes available throughout the year. If we then go to Africa, you can see that there are mountains on the continent, but they're rather uh, rare. They're just in a few places. And Africa in general is an extremely dry continent because you cannot catch the rainwater. Of course, along the equator, we have the continual thunderstorms around the equator, so it is rather green in that region. But away from the, the regions around the equator, it is extremely dry. And of course, the Sahara Desert is the largest desert in the world. We have another big desert here. And you can see that because the lack of mountains, Africa does have a lack of a lot of rain. So we have in the Middle East, there's regions where there's very little water because there's virtually no mountains. And then there's mountains nearby like Turkey and, and um, uh, Iran and so forth, where we have a lot of mountains quite high. They collect water, they collect snow, and then that water becomes available throughout the rest of the year. Same in Europe. In Europe, we have a lot of clouds that move across, but we have a lot, a lot of mountain regions, again, where a lot of rainfall then provides the water for all the rivers that flow through the continent. Same in the Scandinavian countries. Here we have the Appalachian Mountains. We see have a huge mountain range along the uh, the west coast of South America. Again, there's some very dry regions here which would make it impossible to live, except we have a lot of water coming out of the mountains with rivers that run all year long for water to be available. So you can see that again, uh, we're here one more. You can see that in India, well, we do have the monsoon rains that provide a lot of water during that period of time through a lot, a lot of India and Southeast Asia. But again, the mountains right here do provide a tremendous source of water for a lot of the big rivers that come out of that region that provide water year round in that area as well. Again, mountains are key to storage places for rain. There's a lot of places, a lot of the springs of all the rivers around the world start in the mountainous areas. And so it is because these mountains are there that we have places to catch the rain. Uh, if you go to North America here, if you look at the state of Oregon and Washington, we have as much as 100 inches of rain on the west side of the mountains as the clouds come across. They get pushed up to higher elevations because of the adiabatic, ex uh, the adiabatic expansion. They cool down very quickly. They drop the rainwater, so they have an enormous amount of rain. And then on the other side of the mountains, it's extremely dry. There's actually deserts in the state of Washington and Oregon on the other side of the mountains because all that moisture has been uh, released from the clouds and then the dry clouds or the dryness of the air then continues on until we reach the next region of mountains in Utah and in Colorado, Wyoming, where more rain can potentially fall as these <coughs> clouds then get lifted above those mountains. So it's the mountains that provide us with the vast more, <coughs> excuse me, the vast majority of the rainwater all throughout the, uh, all throughout the world. And so again, the world is a special place with its unique features that allow 
life to live in abundance because of these vast regions of water, because of the mountains in the various places around the world. So again, the world is a marvelous place, a marvelous place for life because of these tremendous features.